now going to put my emceeing hat on uh, now as we move into our first block of the day of uh, three speakers. Uh, they're going to be talking about smart contract security. Uh, first up, we have Loy Liu, who is the CEO of cryptocurrency exchange Kyber Network. Loy. Thank you. Brother. I'm going to come in front of the chair. Oh, okay. Can go through the chairs as well. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Loy Liu. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Kyber Network. So my talk was supposed to be uh, smart contract security, but uh, the organizer was kind enough uh, to allow me to talk about uh, uh, you know, cryptocurrency decentralized exchange, which is a topic that I am uh, you know, more involved in the last one year with Kyber Network. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about, you know, explain uh, you know, how decentralized chains work uh, and you know, what's going on with uh, the existing uh, decentralized chains and the approach that uh, we are using at Kyber Network. So um, since the beginning of our uh, cryptocurrency industry, we all know that cryptocurrency exchange is the main target of hacking and internal fraud. So the main event happened back in uh, you know, 2014, in which Mao Gox couldn't under, uh, you know, answer what happened to more than 800,000 Bitcoin. And don't try to you know, convert it to fiat. It's a huge amount of money now. Um, and, you know, Later on, more and more hacking incidents happen uh, from various major agendas. And this, this month alone, in Korea, we have two major agendas uh, you know, getting hacked, including BitTerm and CoreRail. So this is due to, to the nature of these uh, you know, central agendas, because at the end of the day, there's still one single entity that keeps and stores you know, all the coins and assets of users. And when the incident happens, uh, you know, the user get affected, Regulators, you know, they pay more attention on how to protect their end users. So this gives the rise to decentralized trading platforms, including Ether Delta, ZeroX, IDEX, Kyber, uh, Omisego, and Swap. Um, so to you know the mainstream users, these decentralized chains they are roughly similar, and it's very hard for them to differentiate you know, uh, the, dif uh, the, the, the difference between all of these platforms. So, um, but before we go into explain, uh, you know, how these, each, each of these exchanges work, um, what's the goal of decentralized exchanges to you guys? Is this a place for, you know, traders go there and do a lot of trade and earn money, like, you know, what's happening on centralized exchanges? Many people have different ideas. And at Kyber, we also think that decentralized chains should facilitate only meaningful transaction in the ecosystem. So it's not a place for people to you know, earn money, but it's a place for people to convert and you know, buy and sell their tokens easily and securely. Now, uh, let's take a look at all these decentralized chains. Um, how do we build one, right? So we need to consider whether the, on on board, uh, the user onboarding process do they require the users to, re re to register? Uh, do they keep the fund of the users? And if so, where do they keep it? Um, what happened to the operation of the exchange? Uh, whether the order matching happened on-chain or off-chain? Uh, you know, when the order happened, where the settlement happens? Is it on-chain and off-chain? Is it like on the, some, someone else's server? And uh, we, we also need to consider the liquidity source and also the, the target users as well. Now, let's take a look at uh, IDEX. So, most people consider IDEX as one of the decentralized changes, but we think IDEX is partially decentralized change because the only thing that they decentralize is the user onboarding, in which they allow the users to uh, you know, trade from different uh, wallets, including you know, their private key, ledger, or, you know, um, uh, different hardware wallets. Uh, and the rest, including you know, funds, uh, fund custody, order matching, uh, settlement, everything happens within their servers. Um, and they are really good at you know, listing new tokens, so that's why it's, it's, a, you know, it's more uh, popular than other decentralized changes. But you know, mainstream users, they, it's really hard for them to differentiate uh, you know, what's the difference between IDX and, and many other decentralized changes. Um, in, the, in the second uh, you know, class of decentralized changes, we have 0x and Ether Delta. So this 
so these agendas, they, um, they belong to the class of hybrid decentralized agendas in a sense that, uh, you know, there's no uh, fund custody, um, you know, there's no user registration, no KYC in most of the, uh, you know, uh, platforms. Um, but the order book is stored within the, you know, relayers or website server, uh, and the settlement happens on chain. So this is good for the users because even when the hacking happens, the user fund do not get affected. But there is still, you know, some trade-off here because, you know, the matching and, uh, you know, the, um, you know, showing the orders to the users still happen within someone's, you know, server. Um, and it's, uh, it's worth noting that, you know, ZeroX is actually a protocol in which they allow different people to build their own exchange on top of that protocol. And uh, to name a few major ones, we have Radar Relay, uh, Paradex, DDX, and Itfinex. Um, the next class is SWAP. Uh, this is interesting because they operate as a hybrid P2P decentralized change. So there's no order book in SWAP. Um, there's no fund custody, just similar to Xerox and Ether Delta, but there's, um, you know, the users, what they see is, you know, they only see the rate of the token that they want to buy. So basically, uh, S-Swap is uh, aggregating, aggregating all the, uh, you know, orders from different uh, people in the network and show the best price to the users. Uh, and they consider it as a P2P model, uh, you know, and different indexers, they can also connect to all, the, all of these traders in the network and serve the users. Now, at Kyber Network, our mission um, and our motivation for decentralized chain is a little bit different. So what we, what we are trying to do at Kyber Network is to facilitate the value flow in the ecosystem. So it's more than just you know, facilitating uh, meaningful transactions, allowing people to buy, buy and sell tokens. Uh, the, the problem that we are following is the ecosystem complexity uh, problem. Uh, we are amazed by the incredible amount of innovation happening in this space. And every month, we are seeing thousands of new tokens being created. Uh, you know, people issuing their own apps, uh, using their own protocol. But this innovation created a side effect. So the side effect here is, you know, there's a deep fragmentation happening in this space because it's impossible for different people to work with different people because there are just so many and among these you know, thousands of new tokens, even the valuable tokens are unable to be accepted or recognized uh, you know, in, in universally. Uh, so in, in Asia, we have a few, for example, right? We have popular tokens like Zilliqa, like you know, uh, uh, Sentinel Protocol, but how many of you have heard of these tokens? Right, so not, 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 not so many. So this is the main problem, right? Because even even the, the, the most popular token in some area are not recognized outside this area. So the token holders of this token, they cannot spend or use the token outside of their region. And if we do not solve this problem, then there's no unified ecosystem and only isolated token ecosystem. Now, let me just give you a, a few more examples. So most of the vendors here, um, they only accept major tokens, not the others. So if you hold some non-major tokens, right, your tokens are not as useful as the major tokens because you cannot spend at the popular vendors uh, when you travel, for example. And similarly, different dApps, they require different native tokens uh, to be used in their platform. So this is bad both for the DAF and also for the token holders. For the DAF, it creates you know, one HR step for their users, for you know, other users to start using their platform. And for the end users, for the token holders, their tokens cannot be spent or used in different depth. So it can only be used in, within their own ecosystem. So if you know, the purpose of creating a thousand or, or you know, millions of new tokens um, so that these tokens are only used within the isolated ecosystem and achieve this, uh, then I, I think we should not we should not you know, create uh, this you know, uh, cryptocurrency and, and, and blockchain ecosystem. So with Kyber, what we want to solve is to allow the tokens to be easily and seamlessly 
use and spend in different ecosystems, including decentralized changes, uh, dApps, wallets, you know, decentralized fund management platform, portfolios, and payment system. So the way we do it is to build a decentralized liquidity network in which uh, we allow different people to contribute the liquidity for their own tokens that they prefer to uh, Kyber Network. And at the same time, we allow different players in the ecosystem to leverage the liquidity pool that we aggregated from different people. And everything happens on-chain. So um, let me just give you a few examples of what people can use with this liquidity network. So people can uh, easily implement their own token swap service and offer it to their users just by plugging into our smart contract. And the vendors or the merchants, they can accept different cryptocurrency without even knowing it. So here, the, the merchants, they accept only Ethereum. But the, uh, you know, the users, they can just send whatever token that they have. Uh, here we have the OMG token holder. Um, he can just send o OMG token via Kyber, and the conversion will be done instantly, and uh, the merchants will receive in Ether. Um, we can also help make you know, DAP payment seamless. So everything happens in one single transaction. Um, the users can send whatever token that they have to, to uh, Kyber network, and we can forward the uh, you know, corresponding token to the, to the DAP. And it can happen multiple times across, uh, across multiple DAPs. Um, Another example that I want to show is the integration with other uh, financial uh, application on the, on the blockchain, like Melonport is building a decentralized fund ma management platform. So they can also leverage the liquidity pool that Kyber offers to uh, liquidate or rebalance their portfolio on-chain. Um, and at the same time, they can also be uh, you know, the uh, liquidity provider for this liquidity network. So this can happen seamlessly uh, without the user even knowing about it. So in general, uh, Kyber, Kyber Network can power the decentralized liquidity for uh, various you know, parties and players in this ecosystem. Uh, for wallets, we can allow them to um, you know, uh, offer the instant token swap to their users. For the vendors, they can accept multiple tokens um, without even knowing about it. For other dApps, they can liquidate, rebalance their portfolio uh, you know, for decentralized fund management. Uh, they can, we can also help market make on other decentralized changes. Um, and for the token teams, they can enable more uses for their tokens just by plugging in, in uh, you know, Kyber a liquidity network. And uh, we, we, we have got a strong ecosystem traction with uh, multiple uh, integration with other platforms in the ecosystem. Uh, for wallets, we are lucky to uh, have MITRE Wallet and ARM Token. These are the uh, two most popular uh, wallets in, uh, you know, in Ethereum and also in China. Um, apart from that, we also have Trust Wallet and Toshi, the wallet backed by uh, Coinbase integrated with Kyber. Uh, uh, for financial dApps, we also have uh, a few uh, you know, index funds like Olympus Lab, uh, Toto, um, a lending protocol, ETHLAND, uh, and BTOKEN, a decentralized fund as well, uh, have integrated with Kyber. So we can do all of these things because of, of you know, making f uh, important design choices. First of all, we run everything on-chain. So that means you know, for, for, for DAF, they can easily integrate with us by just talking to the smart contract. There's no trust on you know, third-party server. There's, there's no you know, wrapper to bring off-chain or the book to you know, smart contract. And we can also offer full transparency. You can inspect and verify whatever is going on in, in Kyber network. Um, and the liquidity is guaranteed by design. So what that means is, you know, whenever you, you need liquidity, you have it because we allow different people to contribute liquidity uh, uh, in our platform. And these design choices offer three important properties. First of all, everything on-chain is instant. So that means if your smart contract send a transaction to our smart contract, everything will be executed immediately. You don't have to wait. And there's no transactional risk because 
you can, you can see it before you execute everything, and you can verify it as well. Everything is guaranteed by this, the smart contract. And we, we also offer a central liquidity pool of diverse tokens by allowing different parties, different uh, you know, token teams, different token holders to contribute to the reserve. And with that, we think that Bitcoin creates the first token in this space, and Ethereum uh, allows that token creation to be seamless and easy. And with Kyber Network, we want to make the token more is useful. Thank you. <laughs> is there Q and A or I just leave? <laughs> I think we can do Q&A. <laughs> Any question? Please. How is the token used in your ecosystem? So where do you make money for your company? Oh, where is the token used in our platform? Where is our own token, right? So, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> So uh, the token is used to, uh, first of all, incentivize people to integrate with Kyber Network and leverage uh, the, um, the liquidity pool that we aggregate. And secondly, um, it's used by the reserve uh, to, to you know, pay for the right to uh, you know, uh, provide liquidity in our platform. Yeah. Yes. I, um, so at Kyber, right, we allow different people to different interface to integrate with our liquidity pool and uh, to offer their uh, token swap service uh, to their end users. So the KYC and AML requirement is enforced by this party. Yeah. So uh, different people may have different opinion on KYC and AML. So we just leave it, uh, you know, open to them. How about double, double spend on a platform? Yeah, I mean, how you manage the confirmation risk? If you just make everything instant, zero confirmation, then, then how you manage this risk for double spend? Right. So here, uh, this is some, some property guaranteed by the smart contract, right? If your transaction is accepted now and later on is reverted, then everything is reverted as well. So there's no uh, double spending risk here. I think we can discuss this offline. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's pretty simple, but I, I I don't know how to explain it yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess thank you, everyone. Yep. I'll be around. <laughs>